Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is Alex Verdea, a longtime domain investor, the founder of the AudiencePortal.com domain marketplace, and the author of the recently released book for domain investors, The Domain Investing Playbook. Today, Alex and I discuss which industries are hot and not and prime for domain investors since the emergence of COVID-19. We also discuss how Alex has perfected and is perfecting increased domain sales discreetly using Dan.com as an outbound tool as well as a customer relationship management system. We then discuss how Alex has overcome domain objections during the domain negotiation process and how it led him to close a deal after 32 attempts. Yeah, 32 attempts. And last but not least, Alex shares why and how domain investors should get their hands on his latest book, The Domain Investing Playbook. And so with that, Alex, my man, welcome back and thank you for making time to join us today. Hey, Alvin, thanks for having me back. Excited to talk to you, uh, you know, domain names, sales, politics, whatever else we're going to get into today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're probably going to get into a whole bunch. But, man, where we're going to start, though, man, you just released a book called The Domain Investing Playbook. Um, so it's a step by step guide for domain investors. So, hey, let's start there. Like, what made you write this book? All right. Well, uh, so, you know, there, there's there's a couple of reasons I, I uh, got uh, persuaded to write the book. And, and, and one of the, the first reason would be my my Twitter audience kept asking me to put my tips and, and uh, sales tips uh, that I've been posting on Twitter to put them all in, in one collection. So I'm like, OK, well, how about I put them in a book? And that would solve that problem. Uh, the, the second reason, which ties into the first reason, was also I, I got bombarded with DMs with the same questions over and over again from my audience asking, like, how much a search volume should my domain have before I buy it? How much cost per click? All these little details. Where should I host my domains? Where should I keep them? Where should I list them first? So I was like, uh, at that point, I'm like, okay, I, I got to I gotta write the book. That way, <laughs> when I get these kind of messages and, I, and the hundredth time I respond to them, uh, you know, the same question uh, over and over again, I can just, just reference people to, to, to a guide. So uh, really, the book is, is kind of my journey and uh, kind of my process that I've developed as a domain name investor. I talk about specific, you know, categories and niches that I invest in. I talk about a specific process that I, that I use to uh, select and research domain names. I talk about, you know, the tools I use every day to pick out domain, domain name investments. I also talk about sales. I'd say it's the third reason I, I wrote the book is because salespeople and sales in general you know, there, there's the stigma around that, you know, salespeople are bad. Salespeople are dishonest. You know, you, you've heard the old stuff like, you know, used car salesmen are <laughs> crooked and, uh, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, there's ways to, to approach sales. And, you know, the best policy and practice in sales is to be honest and transparent. Like, you don't have to cheat. You don't have to make stuff up. You, you don't have to lie. You don't, you don't have to do those things to be an amazing salesperson. So, so with working from home, with, you know, the coronavirus era, with everything that's going on, a lot of people are starting consulting businesses from home, um, you know, the internet consulting, you know, you can just jump on Zoom and, and, and you know, start a business nowadays, basically. So, Sales is very important. And while I wrote the book about domain names, really the, the concepts I'm talking about in the book can be applied to any business, any service, or any product. Um, at the end of the day, business or, or any investment you make or, or, or any business you start, it's about money and it boils down to sales. 
Um, so I, I cover a lot. There, there's there's a lot of info in that in that book I wrote. Kind of walk you. It's a guide, a step by step guide. Finally, the the I believe it's chapter fourteen. I talk about handling objections because as domain investors, we we're great at selling at the selling part, but a lot of people struggling struggling with closing or with handling objections like. Well, how do you take a no? How do you get from a no to closing a deal? You know, so so that kind of guided me in writing the ebook, and and definitely wanted to write one chapter about handling objections because I got I keep getting messages from me Twitter, be like Alex, I got this deal, I don't know how to go from here, I'm stuck, I got a no, or you know, people don't know how to negotiate and handle objections. So a lot of content tools. If you're starting in the domain names and you want to be an investor, I wish I had this kind of <laughs> kind of tool and this kind of ebook I could have read or 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 a guide. I figured all this out myself. It, it's kind of my journey uh, over the past decade of being a domain investor. So the domain investing playbook you can get at domaininvestingplaybook.com or the domain investment playbook.com or alexverda.com on my website too. Gotcha. So then in terms of the, so this book, the the Domain Investing Playbook, now it actually gets its origin from your Twitter feed because I, I'm assuming then you were sharing most of the content that you've covered in this book, you begin sharing on Twitter in addition to some of your sales. And so the, the first thing that probably comes to the mind of most listeners is why would Alex do such a thing in terms of sharing these tips and tricks as well as his sales on his Twitter feed, knowing that that could possibly create, uh, you know, a bit of competition. So we, we humans are, are very interesting in it and our attention span, according to some research, we, we have the attention span of a goldfish, which is five seconds. Okay. So wait, I what? Put, <laughs> so I read this article that that humans have the average human has the attention span of a goldfish, which is about five seconds. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm gonna roll with it. Wait, um, what? <laughs> he's like, wait, dude, I'm not falling for your joke anymore. You keep saying, wait, what? Every five wait, seconds. <laughs> right. No. No. Hey, like I'm, after I'm the proverbial goldfish. It's like squirrel. All right. Squirrel, well, we got right. squirrels and goldfishes now. <laughs> so, so, so go ahead. So they say that, that the average person only has an attention span of five seconds. And what else? That, that's the joke, but that's, that's also supposedly true. Um, <laughs> the, the point here is that, uh, you know, you read my Twitter feed, but, but then I get at, uh, asked the same questions over and over again. So I'm like, um, I think it'd be a great idea to put it all in one document you know, in a book, that way you can kind of quick reference the book and kind of get the ideas and, and, and you got to work on your mindset every day. So if you're stuck handling objections, open the book, go to chapter 14, you know, on Twitter is very disorganized. You, you know, my, my tweets just, you know, you have to hunt for them and everything like that. Uh. So uh, I guess you could screenshot and copy all my tweets and, and, and not get the book. If you have that kind of time, but the book is a collection of a lot of knowledge. And I'm even including, if you get the book, you get the, the resource manual uh, with like common ways to handle objections and how to approach uh, cold email marketing outbound. Nice. Um, and at the same time, people are struggling. So when you ask me, well, why would I do this? I'm like, because I used to struggle. And nobody wanted to help me. Like before Twitter was Twitter. And when I started domain investing, the only thing I had back then was, you know, DN forum and name pros and, you know, and other, you know, domain investors. Uh, later on, there's, you know, different shows and stuff like that, uh, you know, with domain investing. But bottom line is I don't want other people to struggle and to start like I did. I think you get a leg up if you read and learn before you start spending money and investing money in domain names. I think it's actually critical. I struggled for many years and I had no money. I was broke. So everything that I learned was uh, uh, the hard way. And uh, if, so for somebody to put it all in a book and, and to, to offer 
you know their inside i think i think it's a it's it's really nice and it's a it's a leg up if if you start reading and learning and realizing that at the end of the day it's the the book is about sales and about having processes in, in place and right. learning every day and tweaking you know that you know that's right. what the book is about right so. now now you mentioned though in chapter three i think you mentioned uh it's about a mindset and, and you you briefly kind of run past it there now if i remember correctly if i when i read in the book it said something about having made 32 contacts to one person to get a sale one time like talk about mental tenacity and stick to itiveness to to remain there on that contact to remain with this name to get it over the finish line like it kind of walked me through what goes there because most people are probably going to say you know what i'll give this maybe three attempts and after that we're going to call it done maybe seven at most like what causes someone um and how do you have the mental awareness and and, and just stick to itiveness to keep going to know that okay hey i want to make this sell and whether it takes me 32 times 42 times i'm going to somehow appeal to this buyer to get this domain over the finish line you know that's a that's an interesting story you know i, I didn't get get into details on, on that deal where, where i made 32 contacts but um you know it was a uh, landscaping um, a, a small uh, business a landscaping business that wanted to acquire this domain name and uh the owner um uh, you know the inquiry came through and uh from start to finish it took months and about 32 contacts wow and during this process it was an exchange of emails texts and phone calls <laughs> um, i even had phone calls with with their web designer and i even got called a scammer and a scumbag and and all this stuff by their web designer and uh, i'm like okay well they're just having a bad day right let's let's try it back <laughs> back in a couple of days believe it or not even my my significant other was like it's like alex you're gonna call these people again today and i'm like yeah it's like that it's like the, the the cycle is not complete i'm like the the, the deal is not done uh if this I man up, this man is on groundhog's day <laughs> exactly i'm like if i give up now then i have not helped these people get the domain name they wanted to take their business to the next level. And so, so first of all, the, the mindset is huge. I didn't used to be sold always on domain names. A big mistake that, that salespeople make is they try to sell a service or a product and they're not fully sold on the, the ideas and on the mm. products and services they're pushing. So when, when, so what I'm talking about, when that happens, you know, after three calls or four calls or five emails, what happens if you're not fully sold, completely sold on your products, on your services, or the ideas you're trying to push uh, into the marketplace, you're going to give up. It's what's going to happen. And, and I've uh, been there before. And do customers now, do customers sense that as well? Of course they do, because, because I'll continue the story. You know, at the end of the day, when I got this deal done with the business owner, the business owner was like, it's like Alex, I've, I've, it's like you, you're a, you're you're kind of a, a aggressive salesperson, and you're kind of but you know what? It's like I really appreciate you, and uh, I'm happy I did business with you. You know, we went from Alex, you're a scammer. Thirty two calls <laughs> later, it's like Alex, here's my credit card and, and a thank you. So you know, you 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 got to build a, a, a. Everybody wants to be liked, so. Right. I think that's that's wrong because uh, you know nobody's gonna. There's so many. Not everybody's gonna like you. So, mm. but you gotta stand for something, and you and and you gotta be yourself, and you gotta be authentic, and you gotta be honest and transparent. Now, throughout the whole process, I've always stayed professional and transparent. It, 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 you know, I got called a scammer. I'm like, okay, you're I, you're having a bad day. It's like let's let's work it out what are you worried about like we we can use escrow i'm a solution oriented person uh never lose my cool never lose my temper always stay professional um and i i have thick skin you can call me whatever you want to call me I, you're having a bad day or i don't care <laughs> it's like we'll try again in a couple of days right <laughs> so 
So it, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> and now you need a hug. <laughs> like, let's not talk no main names. Maybe you're just you're having a bad day and maybe the other person's having a bad day. People need to understand that it's okay to get no. It's okay to get rejected. It's okay for people not to like you. Chances are people are not going to like you at first if you're in sales. I'm, I'm sorry to burst everybody's bubble. You're kind of, bo- you know, this idea of bothering people. Yeah, you are bothering people, but I'm also sold on my, my service, on my products. And I know <laughs> my, my service and my products and my good attitude and professionalism is they're going to, it's going to help their business and take their business to the next level. So I am going to insist and persist and I'm going to persevere and close the deal. You know? Yeah, no, I, it's so funny because, you know, for those that, that purchased the book, like right off the bat, I mean, it, on the cover page there, uh, you, you have a domain investing playbook. You got a quote above it. And the quote says, you right. hope to be liked and not bother people. I strive to get massive amounts of criticism and bother people every day. That's right. <laughs> so That's so, right. I mean, that literally just sums up everything in regards to those 32 contacts that you made. But you got to sell at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And, and likely, I would assume that uh, not only do you have the sale, but now you have that relationship. Correct. Not only I got the sale, I got the service, the customer. You know, mm. sales, it's about service. It doesn't matter if I'm selling domains or apples or toilet paper. I'm servicing somebody. I'm taking right. them from point A to point B. So sales is about service. I, you know, I went from being a scumbag or whatever other names to be like, hey, Alex, you know what? I've done business with him. I do business with him again. And that's how you get a referral too. You, you go from being the bad guy to the good guy. So as far as the quote goes on, on, uh, on the cover there, you know, I have a saying, if you're going to bother 100 people every day, I mean, I don't care what you sell. Th- there's just no way you're going you're gonna to go starving. You, you're going to... You're going to make a sale. You're going to make the deal happen. Uh, the, the, the secret is, you know, be persistent and insistent, but you also got to follow up. Most deals happen not the same day. Uh, sometimes mm. you get a deal the same day. Just had a recent deal started in, on March 26th on Dan, and I just closed the deal two days ago, an outbound deal. Wow. So we got March, April, May, June. July, August, and now it's uh, we're September second, right? So it's more than six months, and and it, it's not even a big deal. It's it's a it's a, like a co-domain. It's you know, uh, you know, it's not thousands of dollars or anything like that. But I kept I kept at it. I kept at it. I kept following up, and the deal got closed. Right. So then once you so, I mean, you, you hit that step on follow up. But let's even take a step back in terms yeah, yeah. of you you have the mindset now. But then that takes us from that chapter three mindset mindset into uh, your chapter four, which is really, I think, what most domain investors uh, likely struggle to get their hands or, gra- or or their hands and their minds to grasp. It, and that is the title of that chapter, which is what should I invest in? Now, Alex, in your first show with us, obviously, it was like I want to say it was the, the tail end of 2020, um, which. 2020 was mean. Everybody kind of knows where they were at, what they were doing, how life changed for them drastically. Now, since that time, since that show and episode, like, have you seen changes um, in in regards to how you invest and more so where you invest and what you invest in? Or are you still investing in those same, I guess you'd say, lanes or, or genres of domain in terms of it, there being health, tech, finance and the uh, service industries? Uh, you know, you know, Alvin, I'm I'm really investing in in the same. Uh, it really hasn't changed for me. I'm I'm still investing in the same categories and, and niches. I mean, well, that's good. I, I hate to say this, but <laughs> right, the the money is in 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 finance and health. I mean, mm. hands down, that, that's that's and, that's. And really is that because is of right COVID? Now. Is that because of COVID? You know, the health category, obviously. <laughs> obviously i don't the health category including covid it's uh it affects a lot of a, a lot of uh, uh and a lot of money is being poured in the health sector it's what's mm-hmm. happening 
um you know yeah. I sold some names and uh I'm like okay well I'm not sure where this name is going to go to and next next thing I find out it's uh you know a new company selling um masks and ppp and all this you know health medical devices and everything like that so right right now are so, you seeing a lot in terms of or have you, has your domain portfolio have you experienced a lot in terms of the uh what is it telemed or telehealth or yeah. any of the home health type service names uh yes yes um just the home type service names, I would put those under under the small business and under the, the, the category. Um, so a, a lot of, you know, roofing, HVAC. I mean, we're working from home, right? So right. I was kind of expecting all these uh, small businesses and companies like cleaning, cleaning names, you know, like home cleaning or disinfecting or business cleaning. Those type of names are picking up. And of course, they are going to with COVID and all this going on, but also uh, heating and cooling names. A lot of small businesses in general need a domain name right now more than ever to advertise online. And, and a lot of people that are working from home are gonna need you know, their roof repaired, their toilet repaired, their air conditioning repaired, you know, their air conditioning unit. So there, there's a lot of uh, those, those smaller deals, you know, small businesses, they don't have unlimited budgets, but a lot of the deals that are happening are smaller deals. Uh, and a lot of these small businesses are, are like in the service industry. I call them the service industry. A lot of those deals are happening right now. Also finance and, and crypto names, but I don't have a lot of crypto names. Uh, I wish I did. <laughs> you know, I don't have a lot of crypto names, but you know, there's a lot of money in finance and, and crypto and NFTs and, and everything else. So. And then what about, I guess, what about the, the tech industry? Is that, some, is that somewhat kind of cooled off since we last spoke? I, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. The uh, tech is going, going uh, well. Um, now, it's more like about, about, I guess, future though, right? Not necessarily. More about Correct. Future tech. You know, I sold something, a name like futureseating.com. I think they're building an app for some sort of uh, booking. You know, I think people maybe are going to go back to events and movies and some stuff like that. So a lot of the stuff I sell seems to go to like developers of applications, apps and uh, companies, future companies in the tech space, uh, mm. AI artificial intelligence right there's a lot of movement right now there too uh, machine learning um, it just always blows my mind i'm like well this domain fits in this category and then i sell it and then it goes to oh wait somebody bought it and they're, in the, <laughs> they're not in the tech sector they're really in the finance sector you right. know so fin fintech just, right fintech yeah you just never know you just never know but uh finance tech health and the service industry i mean I think that's where the money's at, you know, travel, I guess people start traveling again. So right. I'm sure, uh, you know, the hotels and restaurants and, but I, I don't really, I don't focus on those. I, I kind of, kind of stay away from those type of names, travel names. So right. where I stay away from, maybe somebody else, you know, sees opportunity. So I think there's opportunity everywhere right now. Yeah, I think there is. I think there's quite a bit of opportunity. And you outlined, you know, th those industries there in your book in chapter four. Now, one of the things that I find interesting, and this is more probably mm. I'm just becoming aware of who knows, it's likely been in play for quite some time, especially during COVID. Uh, it, but I'm starting to see more and more businesses in terms of their advertising efforts, whether that be print, whether that's, uh, you know, advertising wraps on vehicles, um, or whatnot, or even billboards, they're starting to use QR codes. And so that raises the question of, uh, you know, are we seeing a massive shift from just moving away from domains over to QR codes? Now, I know I, I hear all of our listeners, they're like, Alvin, I, how dare you even say that? Because the QR code has to use some sort of domain to even be redirected to go somewhere right. else, I, which I get it. Yeah, which I get it. But at the same time, it's like, well, if there is just a QR code on a um, 
on a billboard or for instance, I know most restaurants, they use QR code now for their menus. Right. And so are we seeing, or rather I, I, I saw a couple of businesses the other day that it was one that I pulled up behind, had a QR code on the back of the truck that took me from a QR code to their Facebook page. And I was like, now that's interesting because like, again, I was like, well, they didn't really have to have a domain. They just had a QR code redirected over to their Facebook page. And so it raises the question of like, are we seeing that QR codes, which they were once once dead or once on on their deathbed, have they made this resurgence and are they giving domain names a a, uh, run for their money? You know, as far as QR codes, I think they're becoming more popular because uh, of one thing, and that thing is crypto. You know, a lot of people Mm -hmm. transact and crypto gets transacted by your phone by scanning you're not going to remember a a bitcoin or ethereum address but your wallet will generate a qr code so i think qr codes uh, since they're being used in crypto uh, qr codes are being used in the restaurant industry you know you scan you go to a restaurant you don't want to touch their menu because somebody might have coughed on it right so you, you pull your phone on and, and and you scan the qr code so i think qr codes are having a comeback but I don't see QR codes being a threat to domain names. Mm. And, y- y- you know, to the people that think that a QR code in a fa- Facebook page is a good replacement for a domain name, I-, I can categorically tell them that that's wrong. I-, I would never want my business to depend on a third party platform like Facebook. Now, it's cool that, that you know, Facebook offers, you know, you can advertise and you know, uh, of course, they want you to use their platform and pay right. for ads and stuff like that. But you, you want to own your your a domain name, a relevant domain name for your business because you're in control. So that that part of the small businesses, I'd say, you just just build your brand on your domain, and then secondary maybe advertise on Facebook and marketing and all that. And now as far as QR codes is, you're still going to need a domain name because the content is stored. Even the restaurant menu is stored on a server on a domain name somewhere. It might be, might be relevant. It might be not. But right. So what are you going to do? You're going to see the uh, uh, ad for a restaurant, for example, on a billboard. You're going to scan that QR code as you go by, right? Uh, two days from now, if you're at home, it's like, hey, I want to order food from that restaurant again. How are you going to get their QR code again? Are you going to get in your car and drive around on the highway to scan the QR code again? So the point here is you want to have a domain name that you're going to remember. So that's the advantage is another advantage of domain names. You know, it might be BayviewRestaurant.com. You're going to remember BayviewRestaurant.com. You're not going to remember. How are you going to remember a QR code? You can't because right. you'd have to scan it back with your app on your phone to access their menu or whatever. As a matter of fact, I ate some really good barbecue the other day at a restaurant and I had to use the QR code. And all I remember is, gosh, I want to order food from that restaurant, but I don't know their name. I just don't know their location. They're in this side of town somewhere. Right. right with a right. QR code. Because all <laughs> I, I did is scan their QR code. I don't remember their name. It's like, I I wish I, you know, it's like, so then I'm searching for barbecue in that side side of town on Google, trying to figure out what the name of the restaurant was. So my opinion is, I think the QR code is great and it's a tool, but it's not a replacement for a domain name. Mm. Um, And and, 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 and in my case, I'm like, I I cannot remember the the name of the restaurant. I like their food. So I'm like, I can't order again where I have to go back there and drive, which I'm not willing to. So, so there you have it. QR code, great tool, would never be a replacement for a domain name. End of story, as far as I'm concerned. That's my deal, End of story. There you heard it first here on Kickstart Commerce Podcast. And so let me ask you this then, Alex. So now in terms of those who, who, who get this book and they get to chapter four and they're reading about what I should invest in, uh, obviously with new domain investors, they're going to see a whole sea of domain extensions. And so like, how would you approach, because when I look at these, these industries, for instance, health, tech, 
finance, uh, services in industry. To me, especially with the the uh, finance and the tech or the fintech industry, you know, a lot of those companies are leaning more towards like dot AI, dot uh, IO, dot CO names. And so, what would be your advice for investors when it comes to those? industries and staying with dot com or kind of dabbling in the cctlds like the dot ios the dot co's the dot ai's and so forth the reason those startups or those companies are buying the dot ai's and dot ios and and you know because you know they, they might afford a single word dot io or dot ai mm-hmm. uh, but really the the bottom line and the reason is why they're not buying the dot com is because they can't afford it or number two, they can't afford it and they, they, they don't have the management in place to realize that it's a good investment mm. to buy your.com. So, the, you know, that, that's, that's how I look at things. And, and as far as new domain investors, what they should be investing in is stick with .com. It's, it's, I have experience and I can tell you that it's super difficult to sell other extensions. Mm super difficult to outbound other ex- extensions even when you even when you see them on twitter of hey this dot io sold for fifty five thousand dollars yeah yeah it, they're one word dot ios right and 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 those one word dot ios uh you, they, they still go for you know you might still have to pay two three two three four five thousand dollars for a single word dot io even at an auction um, and then you might be stuck with it for five to 10 years. I don't know, till, till the right buyer comes along to pay $50,000. Mm. And I think in, in the previous podcast, I, I kind of told you that I'm not cool with wa- wanting to buy one name and holding it forever, you know, or for five or 10 years and then flipping it for 50 grand. I'd rather buy uh, uh, .com names, two, two and three word .com names for maybe anywhere from 20 bucks to 100 bucks and selling them for 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, etc and selling them quicker. So, dot IOs and, you know, dot COs, dot AIs, I think they have their place, but as far as uh, uh, you know, big companies and as far as I'm concerned, I think sooner or later most of those companies will upgrade to the dot com. Uh, it's actually a security risk. If you're in finance and you're you're running a huge uh, uh, company or any financial service and you're running on a .co, I mean, you're, you're leaking traffic. You might be leaking emails to the .com. Well, what if some, you know, some, you know, a bad actor has the .com? Right. What if they're using or selling your data or something? I mean, it's it's kind of a a security risk, in my opinion, if you're in, 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 in a finance industry, in the finance sector, to use anything but a dot com. You're going to get traffic leakage, you're going to get email leakage, uh, and you're going to get confused people and confused clients. So you're doing your clients a disservice by not using dot com. And you can use dot co, you know, when you first start out, maybe they don't have, you don't have the budget or whatever. Yeah, you, you can use .co for a while, but but sooner or later, if, if you're a serious company, you're you're gonna use .com or, or or not. You know, you might have to rebrand and maybe buy something that you can afford, and maybe you can't afford a single word .com, but you sh- you should still use .com name whenever possible. Look at all the hacks that are happening and, and right. stuff, and the cyber crime and all this stuff. I I see no point in using a .io or a .co for a financial institution. I would not do business with them, as a matter of fact. I'd go to say to this extent that I would not do business with, with, a, with a company that, that doesn't use a .com. <laughs> so, uh, so obviously I'm very bullish on .com. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you like it, uh, you know, or you don't, that, that's my view. I love .coms. The thing with .coms is they've, they've been here since 1985. You know, and they're going to uh, be here, so, you know, in my lifetime any, anyways, they're still going to be uh, the go-to uh, extension. And it's interesting because I, I start to think and say somewhere out there in the world, there are 12, 13, 14, 15-year-olds that are becoming aware of, hey, we can actually buy, sell domains. 
now they're coming into this world not having lived the life experience that we had. Like you and I likely know life before the internet. <laughs> That's something that, you know, is far and in between, especially for nowadays, especially like for my kids. They don't know life without an iPad nor a smartphone. It's like, yeah, pagers, eight tracks. Yeah, all that stuff. Cassettes. Yeah, they they missed all that boat, um, especially not knowing life without uh, the internet. Now, that being said, though, while.com is king, obviously it's had a 30, 40 year head start on the rest of these extensions. But for some of these newer investors, I mean, do you believe that they actually have a shot? Uh, like I said, the 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds, because they don't necessarily, I mean, their life is spent online, but I don't know that they put as much emphasis on a domain as we do. So do you <laughs> see that possibly changing for the next generation of investors that that they, yes, they may definitely invest in .com, but do you see them investing in more CCTLDs and just truly making a name for themselves there? Well, so so if you're, you know, if you're a teenager and you wanted to start a brand or your YouTube channel or whatever, you know, you're just starting out on the internet, uh, Here's an idea. Why not? Why not get your first and last name dot com? Chances are you're gonna buy it for, I don't know, a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, a thousand dollars maybe on the aftermarket. And and I see, I see a trend actually in general. You know, a lot of people unemployed are starting all these side gigs, and I see an uptick in first and last name dot com sales. Yeah, you know, like AlvinBrown dot com. I don't know who owns Alvin Brown. I'm not sure if. You do. I know you do. Right. Uh, but you can actually start your brand and create a brand using your, your name. So there's an idea. Why, why would you get a dot IO or dot co? I mean, right. I guess you could, but I'd rather use my first and last name dot com. And, you know, which is most likely available to hand register or maybe pick, pay a couple of hundred dollars as right. an alternative. I've seen I've seen more probably in that age range, like I said, anywhere from the I'll, I'll just call it 10 to 20 age okay. range that that they're used. They're getting their first or some combination, either their first name or their first last name or their first name, middle initial last name in dot TV and forwarding it to their Instagram or their uh, YouTube page. OK, well. OK, so that's great. That, that, that's got its place, right? Like .TV, they have a YouTube channel, makes sense. But what are they going to do when they hit a million followers and they have somebody else owns the .com? And maybe they sell some merch, OK? Right. I just had actually this instance. I'm not going to get into details. Uh, <laughs> but I had this celebrity, you know, own a .co or something they have like a million followers and I, all of a sudden i'm like i'm not sure why i'm getting all this crazy traffic on this random domain name but it was because uh you know they were selling products and services on a dot co they have a youtube channel instagram but i own the dot com and then sooner or later they approach me and be like uh, okay well i'm you know we want to buy this name so in the beginning yeah go with a dot tv dot co whatever you want it's great but what are you going to do when you're going to uh, have a million followers or half a million or and if you're selling products or services, most people default to the dot com. So it mm. goes back to you're losing dollars and you're losing money by not upgrading to the dot com. So what I would do is buy a dot com from the get go and build the brand on that. That's just me, though. You right. know, this is my advice. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise you're gonna have to pay me a lot of money. I, I hate to say it. If I own the dot com and, and you're a celebrity and have uh, you know uh, two million uh, uh, followers and all this stuff, and I and I and I figure it out, you, you're gonna have to pay me a lot of money to get the dot com. And there's not a, not a thing you could do because you should have bought it in the first place. That's my view on it, anyways. My man said, my name is Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Show me the money, y'all. He said, if you're out there, you're buying anything, now.com, you got, hey, don't pass go because you got to go stop by my man, Alex. He's like, you go stop by me and pay, pay the fee. That's it. Stop by me, pay the fee. Hey, well, man, now, you know, what, what's interesting is, so, you know, we touched on it. We touched on what industries to go invest in, in terms of what should someone be investing in. Now, 
obviously you have some some additional chapters like chapter five where you get in the keyword list you get in the search volume cost per click and then in chapter six you're talking about picking a register and listing your domains for sale then we skip to seven we talk about domain auctions platforms chapter eight is about how to find domains to hand register we make our way into chapter nine where we talk about intro to outbound marketing and then you hit us in chapter 10 with an outbound marketing pipeline in 11 we talk about email tips and strategies but then in 12 12 was the one that stuck out to me and it's entitled or titled the alex dan outbound method which had me actually scratching my head because i was like wait a minute i use dan but i don't use i don't do any outbound so how in the world is alex using dan and he's using it as an outbound method so like kind of help clue the the listeners in the those that are thinking about purchasing your book in terms of chapter 12 like clue us in on this whole the alex dan outbound method you know th- this this is one of my sayings and you know <laughs> every buyer is a buyer i i don't care okay so when i approach outbound and sales every buyer is a buyer until until not proven a buyer okay so first of all that the concept and my idea came came from uh um from doing some testing one concept i believe in is people believe what they see and not what you tell them Mm. so if you're making a proposal if you if you can if you're gonna make a counter or an offer or offer a price put it in writing okay put the deal in writing you put the deal in writing, then it becomes real to your prospect. It's you put it in their face. They're gonna have to make a decision. Do I buy or I don't buy? I don't care if you buy today or you don't buy, but I know I did my part and I got my proposal and I got my deal in front of all of them today in writing. So he's gonna have to think about it and make some sort of decision. It's kind of swinging the bat. I think a lot of uh, this applies to domain names or any type of sales. Put the deal in writing. That's what the, the chapter is about. So wow. I took this concept and I'm like, okay, how do I apply it to domain outbound sales? So basically for, and I've tested this extensively and, and I had a group of friends and, and other investors test this for me. That's how I came up with the Alex Dan outbound method. Simply, you know, you get, you do some outbound, you get a, a how much response, or, you know, you get asked for a price. Right. And what I'm going to do is like, okay, I'm going to treat everybody, every buyer is a buyer. I'm going to, I'm going to put the deal in writing and I'm going to import them as a leading Dan. I'm basically starting the closing process. I'm going to assume they're going to buy, even if they're not going to buy, it doesn't matter to me. So wait, so wait, 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 hold on. So you make that initial contact to that that person, whether by phone, whether by, or in Correct. this case, email or Correct. text, but in this case, email. So you email the person, the person then responds and says, okay, how much? And then at that point, you're saying that instead of emailing them back, because that you have their email address, you then enter them into Dan as a lead which then I'm assuming notifies them via email. And then that's where you continue the conversation. Correct. Every buyer is a buyer, Alvin. That's, Got that's it. what that chapter is about. So, now, so wait, yeah. so how many, so wait, so you're filling Dan up with yes. leads. So Dan is almost really like a customer relationship management tool for you because that's keeping right. track of all of the deals and right. as well as all of the contacts and their responses. They're my pipeline. Okay. I'm just setting up my pipeline, man. That's what I'm doing. Got it. Okay. 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 So then they, so you, you enter them in, they receive an email, then what happens? So it depends on how you enter the email in. So uh, you can be a negotiated lead, uh, which that's, that's what I uh, usually do. Uh, Or you have the option for agreement reached. There's two options to enter me in as a lead uh, you want to do it as a negotiation they'll receive an email they'll have to click on that link in the email and it simply says something like you know alex would like to enter negotiations with you on this domain name and it gives them a price 
So that's my, that's my, uh, so basically Dan's email in their inbox, that's my proposal. Okay. So I'm proposing uh, a price, you know, that's my deal. I'm sending you the deal in writing. That's the whole idea of the Alex Dan album method is I'm putting the deal in writing in your inbox and then you have to make a decision. You can click the link and enter negotiations if you want, and that takes them back to the damn platform, or you don't. Now, if you're not going to, guess what I'm going to do the next day? I'm going to follow, follow, follow up. up. Yeah. I'm going to follow, follow up. up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you can use it as a tool. I don't always use the method. Um, mm. You obviously don't want to. I wouldn't. I wouldn't abuse the method, but I use it and I use it quite often and uh, I treat everybody the same. Every buyer is a buyer and I'm going to, every chance I get, I'm going to swing the bat and I'm going to put my offer in writing in your inbox because if you do that, you're going to close more deals. And this is just domain names. I'm talking about, I I don't care what you sell. It, It applies in anything. Email your offer fax it over text text your offer to to your prospect i don't care what service you sell or product or ideas or whatever just put it in writing because that's going to make your prospect this comes down to sales this is going to make your prospect make a decision am i going to do this today or am i not going to do this today you're not going to do it today no problem let's follow up let's figure out you know why Let's get to the bottom of it. Is it a domain name? Is it the price? Is it bad timing? I mean, I got so many follow-ups. I can follow you up till, till <laughs> you know, for a hundred years if I wanted to. The, 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 the thing is, and the concept is, put the deal in writing in front of your prospect. You will close more deals that way. So let me ask Hands you this then, Alex. So you put the deal in writing. You you follow up. <laughs> now, obviously, there is a manual follow up that you put in a message. Hey, just checking back in with your however you choose to communicate. Right. Now, by using Dan, does that afford you any automated, you know, uh, I guess you'd say touches from Dan of reminding the customer that, hey, you have an agreement or, hey, this thing is <laughs> still open? The, the only time Dan said seeing is if uh, your prospect agrees to the agreement and if they accept your offer. I think it's called, you, you're going to get a message that's going to say agreement reached between you and your prospect. And at that point, uh, the Dan support team starts following an op trying to collect payment from your prospect. Uh, I had it before where if I agreed on, on a price in, in an email, I just import the lead as agreement reached and all they so then the email changes a little bit the the proposal changes a little bit when the dan email hits their inbox they click the link and they're prompted immediately to pay hmm. um and uh i believe it or not, i've i've closed deals in one email before just like that just by simply doing that so you know it's it's just another tool and it's just another method and and concept and that's chapter 12 for you is every buyer is a buyer and every chance I get, I'm going to try to put the deal in writing and you're going to close more deals that way. Right. So using that Dan outbound method. Now, obviously, you you go on to, to chapter 13 and you mention like valuations and appraisals and you give some ideas there um, and share some interesting stories there but then i think what really works is that dan the the alex dan outbound method juxtaposed to chapter 14 which is about handling objections because i know for sure using that method you probably have come across your fair share of objections so what do you say to someone who tells you hey alex i like the name but because of your pricing i'm going to consider other options do you leave them alone? Do you drop your price? What do you do in that moment with that type of question? Because I'm pretty certain every last domain investor will experience that at some point in their journey. Uh, it's funny you ask that. Um, and you're right. Every day you're going to get objections and every day you're going to get a no. Um, unfortunately, with Albon, most, most of the times you're going to get nothing back. Right. <laughs> no answer. 
Okay. So he said he doesn't like crickets. <laughs> I don't like crickets. Just just tell me off. Anything. Goldfish and squirrels. Mine. Goldfish right. and squirrels will do, but no crickets. <laughs> right, right. And and so, you know, that's another thing. Maybe outbound is not for everybody. Some people don't want to get told off. Okay. So do, <laughs> don't do it. You know, don't do it. Forget about it, right? You know, that goes back to fixing your mindset and getting sold on your product on services. You got to work on that. Right. You know, that's that's how you overcome uh, uh, rejections and a no and being told off. I rarely drop my price. Mm. So just, just in sales in general, uh, dropping price is kind of a last resort if the prospect is serious. Like I might drop my price some if I know that it's going to get the deal done. But listen, everybody's going to complain about the price. I complain about the price. There's nobody that ever came to me and said, Alex, your price is fantastic or is, is, is too cheap. Nobody has ever came to me <laughs> and said, dude, your price is too cheap. <laughs> right? So everybody's going to complain about the price. So it's kind of like a knee jerk reaction. Okay. I call it, you're going to, the first no, most likely is going to be a, what I call it a knee jerk reaction. You're going to get a no. And I'm like, no, what? No, you're not interested. <laughs> no, you're thinking about something else. No, I'm bothering you right now. Or you're in the middle of something. And no, what are you saying no to? So, you know, the first two, three no's, I don't even, I don't even hear that. Okay. I, I don't hear no. When you tell me no, I don't hear that. I, I, the first three, four times, I'm like, I'm just, you know, he's just busy right now or it's got something else going on. I'm going to follow up again. So everybody that's listening, if you're doing outbound, if you're doing, you know, if you're getting on the phone and calling people, if you're getting a no, it's okay. Uh, get a no three, four times. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out what exactly the problem is. Right. Um, but I'm not going to draw my price. I'm going to increase my activity level. And when I say I'm going to increase my activity level is I might market that name more or I might market, I might follow up more. I'm not going to drop my price right away. Mm. So don't drop your price, increase activity level. Now, when do you price. mention, when do you mention price or do you even mention it? I always like to give price. OK, um, so you I, come out of the gate with the price. I've heard some people say, hey, just kind of go back and forth with them until they bring up the price. No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, you can. I, I've tested I've tested over the years both ways, uh, but I like to be upfront and transparent and I give out a price and then I try to figure out what the problem is or what the holdback is or what's the objection. And there's only going to be a couple of objections. Uh, a no means nothing to me. So I, a no, I'm not just going to settle for a no. I'm going to be like, I'm going to follow up and be like something like, when you say no, what do you mean? Like, uh, I need more clarification from a no. You can't, you can't just tell me no. No to what? No, is it no to, is it a, and I'm, I'm even going to ask at one point in a, in a subsequent follow-up. Uh, I might say, when you say no, is, it a, is the domain name the problem? Is it the price the problem? Is it timing the problem? Well, your feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. You know, uh, that's that's so you're asking them leading questions that that open ended that they have to respond. That they have I want to start a conversation. You know, no might actually be a lot of times it's a, what I call a hidden objection. Is mm. they're a little leery, they don't know you. You're just you, you just contacted them via email. You know, a lot of times I encourage people and I put in my signature, my phone number, and I'd be like, I'm not here just to sell you something. I'm here from start to finish. Feel free to give me a call to discuss this. Okay. So a lot of times it's trust. Mm. You know, it, that's the unspoken objection. They don't trust you yet. They don't know who you are. They don't know who Alex is. They just got an email from Alex. And, uh, you know, they, they, Alex is asking them to buy something. So, of course, you're going to get a no or no response or not interested. Same thing with not interested. Uh, treat a not interested just like you treat a no. Mm. So, let's, so let's, 
let's ask this in because it this other uh, you know, objection often happens or the situation happens that leads to an objection. And it's this, you, you get somebody who, you know, let's say they offer you anywhere from a hundred dollars or $500, or uh, we'll also add in, in some cases we have domains that are listed where we have make offer and they'll put in one more dollar than what you have listed for. Okay. You, that enters into a negotiation you respond back with, let's say you have a, a um, make offer at, you know, $899. Person makes the $1 offer, which puts it at $900. You then respond on that given domain and say $4,800. They're like, you're out of your mind. You're crazy. You're never going to get that. How do you handle that? So first of all, the, the rule number one in selling and uh, you know, some may agree, some may not, but the rule number one in selling is always agree with your prospect, okay? When I say always agree with your prospect, you gotta put yourself in the shoes of your prospect and I'll be like, okay, well, Alvin thinks that $4,800 is a lot of money. Right. So I agree with him because that's, that's his view. He, you know, so basically what you have to do at that point as, as a salesperson, you gotta do a little bit of more selling or you got to do a little bit, try to educate the prospect a little bit. They might not know the value of domain names. So you might, might have to do a little bit of selling, more selling. They might have to do a little bit of, of uh, educating them on the value of the of domain names. You haven't sold enough at that point. So the wrong way to, to handle it is to tell somebody off or to disagree or argue with, with your prospect. I never disagree and I never argue with a prospect ever it's not professional that's not how i do it so i might say something like alvin uh, i agree with you 4800 bucks is a lot of money man but i also had my <laughs> buy and now price put up so i expected you to know that this domain name was going to be expensive even before you made it your original offer mm. so alvin how are we going to work this out man how are we going to work it out how are we going to work it out? So then I'm going to wait for you to, to give me some feedback. And then I might be, uh, uh, you know, you might give me some feedback. You say, Alex, my budget is not that, blah, 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 whatever right. you're going to tell me. Or then I move from come... 900 to 950. Then right. what or does... you go from 900 to 950. And then what I might do is like offer you some more, uh, maybe I'll offer you some articles or some data and try to educate you on value of domain names. Maybe send you a couple of comps you know, via email and, and follow up that way. And then kind of uh, same thing. I'm, I'm going to try to keep the conversation going and try to keep you engaged and see what I can do as a sales guy to make it work for you. Okay. At the end of the day, I'm servicing you, the prospect. It's, it's not about what I want and it's not about my needs. It's about you. So what, I can, what can I do to make this work? For Alvin, hmm. you know, and for this deal. So uh, again, I might send send some uh, some articles about domain name values. I might I might ask you to jump on a phone call and to discuss. And I'm not gonna drop my price, Alvin. What I'm gonna do is before dropping my price and everything, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, keep going back and forth. And I might say, Hey, Alvin, how about this? How about you put the 950 down and let's work out a, a payment plan that works mm. out and fits your budget maybe a 12 month or six month, or let's talk about it. Let's jump on a call and work it out and see, see if we can make this work, you know, to come up with the other 4,800. So I might take the 950, agree to that. And then we might do, I don't know, two, $300 a month uh, via Dan. They have, uh, you know, you can do installments or an escrow service. So it's, it's all about follow-up. It's all about servicing the prospect and servicing the prospect it's not about me uh you know don't a lot of domain investors are like i can't believe that person lowball you know i'm like i just i'm just getting lowball <laughs> left and right i'm like and complaining i'm like no, no no dude as a investor and as a salesperson i assume responsibility for everything that happens if alvin doesn't buy from me today it's not his fault it's my fault 
Okay, that's the mindset. I take responsibility 100% for Alvin not buying my domain or my product or my service today. I'm not going to go on Twitter and complain. I just got lowballed. I'm going to increase my activity level. I'm going to stay, ent stay enthusiastic. I'm going to maybe try to educate the prospect a little bit about the value or, or you know, whatever product or service I'm selling. And I'm going to keep persisting and insisting because at the end of the day, if I don't do business with the prospect, with Alvin, I haven't helped them. Mm. Okay. There's, if there's no exchange, there's, there's no exchange of, of product and money or value or there's no, if there's no exchange, there's no deal. There's no sale. Right. There's no, right. you haven't helped anybody. You got to close the deal and, and close the process, you know, the cycle, the sales cycle. Uh, and that's how you help your prospect by closing the deal, closing them on your product and on your service. And you got to do that. Just follow up. That's, right. that's where the money's at. So then what do you do with that, that buyer who says to you, okay, Alex, you got me to 950. That that's, I'm, I'm not really wanting to go higher than 950. And oh, by the way, Alex, even if you did get me to a thousand, I have other options that are better than your domain. How do you respond? Of, of course, you know. He's like, bye, um, Felicia. <laughs> no, 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 no. That you, you're doing a disservice to your prospect if you if you tell them bye. Okay, so so so, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. Offer a payment plan as an option. Don't mm. drop your price. I'm not dropping my price. I might offer you a payment plan, and you might still say no to that. Right. Because I, I can buy another name for a thousand. Right. That's is that what you said? And, right. And, and I might and I might say something like, hey, listen, I know you can buy another name for a thousand. Heck, you can go right now and go daddy and get one for eleven dollars. <laughs> but it's not alvinbrown.com. You know, it's it's domain names are unique. It's not alvinbrown.com. It's not going to sol solve your problem. And uh, um, sooner or later, if you build a brand, uh, you might have to come back to me. And, uh, you know, later down the road, you might have to come back to me. And the price is not going to be, <laughs> it might be a different price too, right? Right. So what, what I never do is ask, and I suggest nobody does this because you get burned, is, well, where, did, where are you getting a better price? Or where, you know, uh, I, I never ask questions like, well, what other, what, what other names are you looking at? You know, a lot of times I said, dude, I'm looking at other, I'm buying a car. I'm looking at five other cars today. Okay. As a salesperson, I'm not going to ask, well, what other cars are you looking at and what prices? It's not relevant. Domain names are unique. So uh, just because I have my name listed at $5,000 and you're looking at this name, you can't compare one domain name with another because domain names are unique. It, they're one off. Okay. Mm. Um, and obviously alvinbrown.com and alvinbrownconsulting.com uh, are two different deals. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. You could start your brand on alvinbrown.consulting.com uh, too, and you can get it for $9.99. Uh, but you can't compare that name with just alvinbrown.com because there might be 300 Alvin Browns on planet Earth, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, somebody else, uh, uh, you know, you have some competition. Some other Alvin Brown might, might want to own the, the dot com. Gotcha. Um, so then so don't get pressured. Don't get pressured because someone tells you, hey, they have another offer that then you lower their price. And actuality, Alex, I... I think I've had a, that occasionally happen and I've actually gone up in price and then yeah. fooled around and made a sale. Yeah. Uh, right. So I, ne I, I never, I would not ask like, Hey, what did the uh, X, Y, or Z, what price did they give you? Not relevant. I don't even bring it up. I completely ignore it. I'm not going to, well, what price did they give you? Because once you, once you're going to get into that and they're going to, Oh, I got something for 500. Uh, then you then you're stuck there, right? It's it's almost you're, it's like you're anchored to like to there, or or you're just gonna you know you're just gonna uh, have to go from there. I think it's wrong. I think it's also wrong to say as a seller that you have 
other offers, other higher offers. Okay, I've had instances and, and some guys came to me to try to save their deal, you know, after they got in the corner. And uh, at one point they said to the prospect that I, I have a couple other higher offers. So uh, uh, come up to, you know, to this price, right? So that being dishonest, that, that's being dishonest. I would, I would uh, advise, strongly advise against that. If you don't right. have another offer on your name, never, I would never bring that up. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I had an offer on the same name from somebody else, I wouldn't bring it up at all. <laughs> I wouldn't bring it yeah. up at all. Yeah. Because the, 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 then at that point, the prospect's going to say, well, if you got a better offer, take it. And that's it. The deal is done. You right. Can, how are you going to follow up with that? So, you know, that's one way to blow a deal is, is being dishonest and telling people you have other offers when you actually don't. So it, it gotcha. kind of goes... Uh, so that's two things I don't do. I never ask for an offer. Usually, if I give you price, I'm not going to ask you for an offer. I'm just not. I'm going to try to work on my price and, and work out the details. Uh, maybe offer a payment plan and to get you to my price, but I'm not going to offer a discount. Now, at the end, you might be like, "Okay, Alex, we can't get to 4,800, but we might be able to get to 4,000 or." 42 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask me for a 10% and I'm convinced that you're going to pull the trigger, if I give you that 10% discount, then I will do that mm. at that point only. But Alex, I need 20%. Yeah, you're not going to get 20%. <laughs> <Come on>. Sorry. <laughs> well, Alex, I need another 5%. Yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen. You, you drop your price and then next thing you know, they, you, they're going to want the arms and the legs. OK, <laughs> the kickbacks are ne never going to stop coming. <laughs> so at one point, you're going to politely you're basically going to politely say no and be like that. Forty eight hundred is the price. Uh, you know, we can work it out, work out a payment plan. Uh, it's a tax deduction. You know, Uncle Sam is going to uh, write this deal off for you. Let's do this, Alvin. Come on. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so no, that may, that um, that may, that makes complete sense. And so I think that that to me it, those those two chapters uh chapter 12 I mean they're all important chapters but chapter 12 definitely chapter 14 uh stands out because I know that many many domain investors uh often struggle and as well as with chapter 4 um and chapter 3. So 3 4 12 and 14 are, are certainly chapters that every domain investor should, uh, I would say even before they make a buy, before they even try to sell, it, these are chapters that are imperative to read. And, and so with that, so then wrapping up, Alex, in, in regards of like, how do people get their hands on this book? Like, where do they need to go? What do they need to do? The, the book is easy to get. I, I have it hosted on a, on a third party platform that I do not like to promote because I like to promote my uh, own website and products and services. <laughs> so you can get the book at alexverdad.com. You can go on Twitter and follow me at Alex Verda and, and follow uh, uh, the, the link to purchase the book is in my bio. Uh, you could always go to the domain investing playbook.com. I know hey. it's long. I know it's long, but it's a redirect. <laughs> or if you don't want to use the domain investing playbook.com, then I also have uh, domain investing playbook.com without the duh. So Not bad. Al Alexverda.com, the domain investing playbook.com. Follow me on Twitter and use the, the link in my, uh, in my uh, bio there, in my profile. I think I offer, you know, I, I think I teach what schools don't teach you, what schools mm. have failed to teach us when it comes to to sales and when it comes to uh, pushing your, your products and, and your ideas. There, there's just so many talented people out there, uh, Alvin, you know, much more talented than me, uh, you know, artists, writers, uh, not just domain investors. The, the problem is they don't know how to market and sales. And when, when you talk about a business and when you talk about, you know, if you're an artist, you got to promote yourself. I'm sorry to say this, but you got to become a master salesman before you can sell your paintings. Yeah. Because 
you might have the best paintings, but nobody's going to know about you. Right. If, either, if you I, either got to sell them or you better have somebody that can. That can. If they don't know you, they can do business with you. Okay. That's it. Sales is everything. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm just, I want to touch a little bit on this because uh, some people try outbound marketing, call calls, et cetera, and it doesn't work. And then they're like, oh, you know, it didn't work for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to be a scammer. I don't want to be a spammer, et cetera. Right. And I'm like, goes back to your mindset. You got to right. fix your mindset. Okay. Otherwise you're going to try it and you're going to quit. And, and you got to make a time commitment too. You, you can't, you, you can't just give up after a week. Right. You know, I've been doing sales for more than a decade. You can say anything or anybody can say anything in it and everything to me. It doesn't, you know, you, I built thick skin so that, you know, that's part of it too. You just keep going at it enthusiastic and with a positive attitude, you start the day fresh every day. So sales is a way of life. Everything depends on sales. Everything. Yeah. That certainly makes sense. And so uh, with that, man, we're out of time. But Alex, man, hey, thank you again for joining us today. And man, hey, thank you for writing and sharing your knowledge, man. All right. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy I, uh, I wrote the book. You know, if it helps one person out there and it, it changes their life for the better, it would be all worth it for me. So, so the ideas, the concept I talk in the book, you know, you can apply it to any business. So anybody that picks up the book, you know, I know I'm not going to help everybody, but if it changes one person's, you know, business and life that then, then I've done my, my job with the book. So that, that's, that'd be awesome. Well, that's awesome. And with that, thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. And last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.